with us on the marketplace. My name is Daryl Kwao. Ghana has secured a little over $8 billion. I said CDs in my intro. It's $8 billion as revenue since it started exporting crude oil in 2011. Now, this was captured in the semi-annual petrol funds report released by the Bank of Ghana. Here's George Raffi with more. The $8 billion is Ghana's share of crude since the country started exporting oil in commercial quantities. This doesn't capture the profits and revenue of other private exploration firms on Ghana's oil area. But how has the money been spent based on Ghana's petroleum accounts in the Federal Reserve in New York, USA? A little over $3 billion had been advanced to government to support projects and initiatives in the budget over the years. Two. $4 billion has been taken up by the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation to finance its exploration activities and other commitments on the oil area. The petroleum law requires that a fraction of the country's earnings should be set aside for future generations and support the budget in crisis times. So the Heritage Fund, which should be for future generations, has about $770 million in its account, which includes interest earnings as well, while $1.8 billion has been advanced toward the Stabilization Fund. The report also showed that Ghana's oil shipments since 2011 to June this year stood at 56 million barrels, valued at $6.5 billion. All right, joining me on Zoom is research analyst with the Institute for Energy Security, Fritz Moses. Uh, grateful you could join us. It's been a long time, Fritz. Your thoughts on this report on revenue accrued since uh, crude oil uh, export started in 2011. $8 billion, just enough of no better. Charlie. All right, um, Darrell, yes. Um, thanks for having me. It's been pretty long, as I just stated. Um, Yes, um, I think it's uh, we, we we have also been following the developments in the uh, petroleum revenue sector. What we understand is that, um, of course, as a, um, a growing uh, petroleum exporting country, our our majority of our um, revenues um, is, is accrued from our participation in the uh, various operations that IOC is undertaking, the various fields we have in the country, and so. We, we, we accept and we, we recognize this as gains that um, are, are gainful, are helpful for our economy, um, for GMPC itself, its operations, and, and other things that it engages in. Um, our concern has been um, largely the reliance largely of um, some government entities, um, state-owned enterprises, in taking um, some loans, sometimes guarantees also, from GMPC to uh, offset its liabilities. So, of course, you look at how, how sometimes um, complaints have come up with um, GMPC being used as a, um, a revenues from um, the Ghana's um, oil sector, particularly from GMPC, being used to pay up some um, judgment debts uh, um, that the, the country has have, have had to pay. Mm. And these are concerns that um, aside um, the, the, of course, the, the investments that GMPC makes in its operations, in its CSI that we see um, through the um, uh, human brain development, through courses, AOG, um, AOGC, um, various master's programs that it's, it's undertaking in UCC, um, University of Ghana, and the K University, all are all geared towards um, gainfully getting um, uh, as much as we can from the oil process that GMPC um, um, acquires from its participation in, 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 in the various exploration activities. Yeah, and so I'm wondering, uh, what can we do to end more than we are doing now, do you think? Great. So uh, one of the major things that um, the PRMA, that the Freedom of Management Act, uh, stipulates or um, looks forward to is uh, increasing GMPC stakes in our uh, oil exploration activities. Of course, with the incoming or the, the establishment of the Explo code, the purpose was that um, over a period of time, we would have seen GMPC increase its stake through the exploco in, in the various fields. But unfortunately, due to the lag in human capacity development and technical capacity development, we haven't been able to um, increase both our infrastructure, uh, infrastructure um, ability as a country and also our human resource to take up that mandate. Of course, we, we anticipate that the decommissioning of the salt one oil field will serve as a um, training ground for, um, for increasing technical know-how 
and operations in the oil fields. But then again, if we're able to increase our technical capacity as, as, um, as a country, also invest in infrastructure for um, um, taking up uh, more uh, sticks in the oil fields, we can be able to increase our, our, our um, um, revenues from, from there. Yeah, because I was going to ask you about uh, what government's posture should be when it comes to agreements with oil firms such that we're also benefiting from these companies who are making money off us. Uh, what is the current state of affairs? How can that be improved? Okay, so um, like I, I stated earlier, um, basically what we are now seeing is uh, our continued um, 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 uh, participation, uh, I mean non-participation, non um, uh, interest that we have in, in oil exploration. Of course, that means that we come in with a larger, uh, a lower or smaller percentage in the revenues that would accrue uh, based on and on each field. But should governments be able to, um, should we be able to increase our capacity technical and, um, and infrastructure-wise, um, we will be able to increase our stakes in these oil fields. Of course, the understanding is that we are seeing more um, fields being um, discovered. We are seeing the protein basin. Um, and the potential that it holds for our oil economy and how it can benefit this country. If we don't see um, local capacity development, then we, we may still have to go by the 15 or so percent that we still enjoy mm. from proceed that um, are leaving the country. Uh, then the question comes up about uh, how well we have maximized the usage of the $8 billion accrued from uh, crude oil exports so far. Certainly, um, majority of the um, proceeds have gone into reinvesting into the energy sector, particularly the oil sector itself. And so that's one commendable feat that we think um, um, we should be looking at. Again, also, uh, the PRMA specifies or requests that um, GNPC engage in some, engages in some uh, appropriate social investment activities. We see several of it laid across the country. Um, of course, already 70% of the revenues are good. From the petroleum volume fund is, is, um, is uh, I mean, is submitted to government um, annual budget funding amounts. Also, we are seeing our also the stabilization fund also adds on to this um, revenue that is 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 is, is gained from the um, from GMPC's operations in the oil sector. Um, aside that, um, in 2019 there was a landmark with the ruling um, that sought to ensure that five percent of the APFA um, uh, amount was subject to um, the district assembly common fund. That is to enable or help with um, various developments around the, um, the, the the country, of course, ensuring that there is some um, um, some general uh, there is no disparity in in, in the revenues of our oil proceeds mm. reaching across the country. But unfortunately, what we see, especially from 2021, was only about 1.7 percent of that um, um, resource was was delivered to the district assembly of and it's something that. We think um, it's it's not commendable. It's something we should be able to improve on because from five percent and we are doing this one percent. I don't think it's something we should we should be comfortable with. All right, let's switch topics. Let's head downstream. Uh, fuel prices are going down from Monday. We expect a reduction of between three to six percent. What is uh, the projection from your end, and what are the factors contributing to this uh, downward trend? Right. So yes, we also seen some reductions at the various pumps for both petrol and diesel. Um, of course, the large uh, amount of reduction we are seeing will come from the petrol side. We expect to see that petrol will reduce by close to some 10% uh, on its current price. And diesel, somewhere around 5%, uh, should be the, the figure. Um, but of course, um, the understanding we are seeing, or the figures we are, we are getting from the international market and the local CD um, dollar rates, um, is what is precipitating this um, um, increases or this reduction in the various prices. On so international markets, we saw um, gasoline that petrol prices dropped by some close to 15 percent. Um, diesel prices too dropped around 7 percent. Um, unfortunately, however, for our CD exchange rates against the US dollar, we saw a depreciation of the CD again by some 2.2 percent um, from the mid July to the end of um, July, somewhere yesterday. And so these are the two factors that are causing the expected reductions in the various prices at the various forms. Mm. For how long uh, are fuel consumers going to get this break? Is it short lived? Um, fortunately, like the way the pricing window um, exists, uh, we are seeing that uh, these price reductions would last are still there um, to the first half of, of August next month. And, and um, of course, should the current situation that we are seeing on the international markets where the prices are dropping, um, in the pricing window, largely we saw prices drop for oil around nine, $99 per barrel, um, touching briefly around $100, um, $106, $107. 
and then falling back again to around one hundred and one dollars at the end of the pricing window per barrel uh, uh, mark. If that the trend should continue to see prices fall, um, unfortunately, it hasn't. As of today, prices were hoping around one hundred and eight dollars per barrel. Um, we expect that going forward into next week, we may see price falls um, continues. If that should be the case, then it means that we may see a protracted period of re reduced prices at the various forms. All right, Fritz Moses, uh, research analyst with the IES. Uh, grateful that you could join us. Uh, good to see you once again.